Hey guys, Michael Kelly, and I'm in studio with Hollywood Reporter. I have to ask you, are you still mourning Doug? Because I still am, and... Yeah, I guess, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, I, think, I think I always will, you know, as an actor, to be given that gift of that character, you know, and uh, to get to say those words every day, you know, I'll miss that. That being said, I'm glad that I had the finality that I had with him. How has it been, though, leaving this character behind? I know you touched on it a little bit. That was the greatest job I've ever had. It was so much fun. I was challenged as an artist every single day. Every single season, I was shocked and terrified to take on the challenges that they threw at me as an actor. Just like, oh my god, I don't know how I'm going to do that, you know? Yeah. And uh, to, to, to you know, to bring it to its end, it was tough. It was really hard. Why do you think audiences <clears throat> gravitated so much towards Doug over the years? What do you think was it about him? Well, I think because, um, I mean, Bo Willeman was instrumental in helping me develop and create that character. A few things that he said to me early on really helped me give the foundation. But I think it's, I can really attribute it to uh, a little nugget that Arthur Penn gave me when I was under his tutelage at the actor studio. And he said, always bring as much of yourself to the character as you can to ground it in a, in a sense of reality. And so for me, when I was creating that character, I was like, okay, look, he does a lot of bad things. And we knew that early on. Um, but if you have humanity underneath that and you see, whether it's ever vocalized or not, you see conflict in that character, struggle in that character to do some of the things that he does because he knows it's the right thing that he has to do for his job, for his boss. If you see the internal struggle underneath, then I think it makes it a far more compelling character, that he's a good person doing bad things. Um, a lot of people would argue that he's not a good person, yeah, but I, argument, I have but. to believe that, right? I have to believe that in playing that character. You have to like the character that you're playing in some way, shape, or form. I think that's why. I don't know. Do you feel like Doug kind of came full circle in terms of showing that humanity and that vulnerability towards the end? Or Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like it was, it was layered, layered throughout. You know what I mean? Like, you saw when he did those horrible things with Rachel all throughout the relationship, not just the end. You saw that that struggle uh, but in the end full circle I mean I think it was just that, that this is a man who was dedicated to you know his job yeah. his boss and the legacy of that person it became like many things with Doug when he does something he fully obsesses over it so for he him protecting that legacy way, yeah. exactly had to be justified and and um, yeah so Full circle, I guess life and death, yeah. <laughs> in a way, in a way, you die, yeah. you get yeah. killed by yeah. Claire Hall. With kind of the Doug and um, Claire face off in the final season, mm -hmm. was there ever a moment though that you guys thought of having them kind of team up in the final season and, and kind of come I don't together? Know. That, that's probably more of a Frank and Melissa question. It, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, you know, I would have loved that. You know, there's the, I, I, look to Robin Wright as not just an exemplary director, but an actor yeah. and someone I loved playing with as adversaries or as uh, partners that would have been equally interesting, I think. Um, I'm sure it's something they explore. I think they explored everything yeah. <laughs> when shit at the van. Grappling with what happened and kind of have, having to retool this season, how did you cope with what went on? And It was tough, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, it was, it, was, it was incredibly difficult for me because I'm a pretty sensitive person. Yeah. Me too. When everything, happen you know you, there's a million things that go through your head and you know it was really tough and you know my wife will attest to it like I was really you know shook and then just like it, I, I was very happy that it immediately went or within a week it, it it went from oh my god to okay wait how do we finish this how, we have to finish this and I called Robin and I was like what are we gonna do? And I was like, we gotta finish this. And she's like, I know, I'm on it too. And and so, you know, we had conversations and then MRC and Netflix and everyone decided. I said to Robin, I was like, we can't not have these people go back to work. You know, it's not like an LA crew or a New York crew that has another job that they can just jump to. You know, a lot of these people are Baltimore, Baltimore family crew yeah. and had become our family over these six years. And they had already had a long hiatus, not working. And so the thought of them 
not getting to go back to work. They had all counted on it. They even thought it was going to go beyond that, you know, in the hopes that the spinoff would come there. And yeah. so they were my family, and the thought of those people and their families that I knew now not working, I, I was very happy that it, that became the focus. How do we get everybody back to work? And then how do we, how do we finish this show that, you know, it seems crazy, but that was six years ago, and that was the first original s streaming show for Netflix. Yeah. It, it was it only was six the, years ago. It was the first way I was introduced to Netflix, actually. Right, and how do you not, how do you not bring that to a conclusion yeah. because of the actions and uh, of of one person? How, we had to, we had to, and so that became the focus. And uh, and thank God, because I was kind of just, you know, in a dark in a dark place. So I was really happy that, that we were able to do that. One that I really appreciated about the final season is tonally it felt kind of like the show that I was first introduced to in mm -hmm. this darker, kind of more theatrical sense. Can you kind of talk about, do you agree with that? or I do. Yeah. I, I think, <clears throat> you know, David Fincher was uh, Robin's mentor as a director. And so I think, uh, you know, a lot of people don't even realize that Robin directed more episodes She's, than anyone. Yeah. And she's a true Talks. actor's director, and she, I'm not saying she is Fincher, maybe one day she can be a Fincher, you know, David Fincher, in my mind, is one of the greatest directors to ever live. I, he hasn't made a bad movie. No. He'll say Aliens, whatever uh -oh. it was, was a bad one. That was his first movie, so I give him a little <laughs> slack there. But I mean, literally, for a director to not make a bad movie is a pretty amazing accomplishment. And she, you know, loved his style and learned from him. Um, always was he was always available to her when she was directing um, as a friend and uh, cool. and I think that's I think that's why you really see Doug have this love for Rachel and he had these feelings for Liam but at the end of the day his love was never fulfilled even like Janine he tries to right. get that last second of hope <laughs> like what was that kiss <laughs> no, like, was just, I was like wait what <laughs> but what is this and I had so much fun with really what? oh yeah we're really good friends and I was like she was like you are so weird dude you are so weird <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had a vibe. Why do you think he never got love? Um, I don't think he's, I mean, like relationship no material. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think that he has, uh, I don't, it's just not in his DNA to have a relationship. But, um, I think he's capable of loving, maybe being loved, but it would take a pretty tolerant woman. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, relationship, I think it's just, he, he doesn't have time for it. Now get into the final scene and the final moments of Doug. <clears throat> you said it was a 14 hour day that day. Yeah, it was insane. Wh were the, your Robin final? wanted two days. And, really? And I was like, and I remember thinking the day before, I was like, oh, dude, we got this. And then we got on set that day and I was like, oh I shit. I feel like I would I want it just so you, don't, so you don't have to say goodbye <laughs> in one day. Yeah. Um, what was kind of filming your death like and uh, it was, what were the challenges of that? I think the biggest challenge of that was obviously doing it in the one day, but also what he went through in that scene, you know, coming in thinking he's going to get what he wants, not getting what he wants is so foreign to him. And then to all of a sudden out of the blue unload and say that he killed the man who he served his whole life and what that does to him. And then to go into this fit of rage like it was a it was a pretty it's sick a, roller coaster ride, and to ride performance. it for fourteen hours, like both the two of us had absolutely nothing left in the tank when we were done. Right? We left it all on the floor there, and just like all we can do is the best we can do, you know. Okay, I can cry, you know, however many times I did it, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh my god, I can't, I can't produce the tears. And it, one of my favorite uh, things about that day was Gary J, the guy I was just talking about. Uh, was also someone so dear to me, yeah. like one of the kindest men. And it was our last day. And Robin and I had asked for it to be our last day. Yeah. And so I was like, I couldn't. Uh, they are like, we're rolling. You ready? And I'm just like, no. And I'm like, not getting to that place. And I'm like, hang on. And I couldn't get there. And I was like, Gary, can I give you a hug? And he's like, yeah. And I gave him a hug. And I just Broke started down. crying. Oh and I was like... Okay, go, whatever we got. <laughs> we're ready. That's we're awesome. ready. And, and I used them three or four times. And You're it worked up every too. single, yeah. It, it really, because the thought of not yeah, being around that guy good. anymore, and a lot of that crew, you know, that was, uh, you know, Lorenzo, our sound guy. And to be with them for six months of, of every year for six years, and then you don't. Like, we're all still in touch, and we email, and 
Um, Lorenzo uh, came and did a, 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 an independent film that I, I produced and starred in. And I'll work with these people again, but it's that absence in your life. It's that not knowing you're going to, to see them again next year that's so hard for me because they're just... It's tough for me, too. I'm not going to see you guys. Family. <laughs> in terms of these iconic characters, obviously Claire and Doug, how do you think they rank in kind of TV history and oh, the, the shows you've gonna, loved? I'm not going to rank myself, but she, I mean, you got to put her up there, right? Yeah. She was, especially looking at the trajectory of that character over those six years for her, you know, and how she just rose and rose and rose and rose. And well, rose on screen and off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, and she's such a badass, man. Like, I love Robin, uh, and I love that character. There's something so Shakespearean about her. She's just, she was the perfect woman to play that character. I believe many of us were, uh, you know, credit to Lorraine Mayfield. We were the perfect people to play those roles. So. For me, that's my hope, is that someone watches the show and is like, I just can't this imagine a, anybody yeah. else playing it. Like that's kind of that's, that's I think that's the best compliment you could have. And breaking the fourth wall. How special? Mm -hmm. How special did you feel? Hated it. You I did? Absolutely Why? hated it. Because I was like Doug wouldn't. You know, he, went, he just wouldn't right do now. it. Yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't. Uh, and it's funny. I remember Frank and Melissa when they first pitched it to me. I was like, no, 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 no. And she's like, was like, what is it with you and Robin? Like, why do you not want to do this? And they're like. It's just not my thing, man. Yeah. Like, it's the same reason that I would never see Doug. Uh, people are always like, well, Doug, you know, season three, four, five, whatever. Yeah. Doug's going to be president. I'm like, no. you imagine the guy on the campaign trail? <laughs> it's the same reason. He didn't. Many people hoped that would happen. So, but, yeah. No. So, for me, I was like, okay. And they were like, well, this is really what we want to do. And I was like, all right, well, you are my bosses, so I'm going to do it. Uh, but I was like, it has to make sense to me, so let me just think about it. And I came back to them and I said, I think it's got to be, if we're going to do it, I think it has to be either he's talking to himself yeah. or he's talking to Frank. Because anything else, he doesn't care about the audience. He doesn't care about, why would he choose to communicate with them? So they were like, okay, well, that's, that's interesting. And, and we explored it that way, you know. And even if they wanted me, like, to literally address the that's audience, the I was like, it's going to be yeah. to me. To yourself, I, yeah. I don't... I'll make it. In my incredible. head, I had to make it make sense. It's incredible. I'm so sad the show's over. Yeah. Like, hey, thanks so Me much too. for being here. Yeah, man. Lastly, next up, you have Jack Ryan, right? Yeah. What can you tease about what fans can expect? Um, I play the uh, the chief of station, Mike, uh, Mike November. Yeah. Uh, for the, uh, He's the chief of station for the CIA in Caracas, Venezuela. And Jack Ryan and, and Wendell Pierce's character uh, come there to start on this case. And, you know, like... Jack Ryan shit's gonna get crazy. <laughs> he becomes part of the group, and they they uh, they have a lot of fun. It's I, I I had an absolute blast. Really? I mean, uh, those those two guys, not only great actors, but two of the greatest guys uh, to work with and hang out with, like on a daily basis. John Krasinski's one of the most generous, funny yeah, people I've ever met. You know. Uh, his wife's funnier, but... Uh, oh, yeah. We did a funny video. <laughs> Sorry, you know I'm going to get that in, John. Um, <laughs> he always gives me shit about it. Yeah, so uh, I'm, 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 I couldn't be more excited. Yeah. And it was such a different thing from House of Cards. And for me, like, coming off of House of Cards, that, that. one-year deal was, like, really... It, it couldn't... It was the perfect offer for me because I was like, oh... I don't have to think about the next six years yeah. of my life at this exact moment. And it was, and I think it came like right before House of Cards ended. And I was like, oh, it's so perfect. Like, <laughs> it's sort of the perfect thing, the band aid that I needed to walk away from that and immediately go into something else and, and, uh, and really have fun. I mean, I was flying Blackhawks so and sad. shooting <laughs> M16s. It's like, it was fun, you know. Not a gun guy, by the way, but it was fun. It was to, fun to play. Ten yeah. months, yeah. Thanks so much for being here. I really Thank appreciate you, man. it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.